here is Stefania Cassini, and you're watching Without Your Hat. Welcome to the station of decapitation without your head. I'm Nasty Neal, and I'm joined by the fine fellows who made repossession. We have director Go Ming Zhu. Zhu? Hi. Hello. Scott C. Hilliard. Hi. In the lead, Gerald Chu. Hi there. It's good to have you guys here. So good to be for, here. People, for people not familiar yet, can uh, you give us an idea of what repossession is about? Okay, um, well, Repossession is a tricky film. It's a blend of uh, social drama and psychological slash supernatural horror. And we kind of try to dance that fine line in between genres. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little hard to categorize, I think. I, so thank you for having us. Yeah, th uh, thanks for being on. And I personally like that, a movie that doesn't necessarily fit into one genre. And that's what I always liked about festivals, is you get to see a lot of stuff that might, you know, uh, not fit into uh, this is strictly horror, this is drama, this is whatever. For me, it doesn't really matter what genre of movie is, as long as it, I, I like it. Fair enough. Cool. Right. So when you <laughs> yeah. were, like, making it, though, did anyone step in and say, like, you know, uh, that's a problem, that it's a blend of genres? Uh, well, well, not not uh, entirely. Well, yeah, I mean, like, like there, there were a few people that, uh, that said, like, well, I mean, they, they, they had... Uh, opinions and all that but like it wasn't so much about the uh about like the genre bending and all that right right wings you yeah um i mean we produced it ourselves so so you don't have anyone to answer have to you, right? <laughs> yeah breathing down our necks yeah um but you know we we, we thought that there was a niche for kind of like art house horror and, and you know, I'd seen things like uh, Oliver Asayas's uh, Personal Shopper, which is Kristen Stewart, and that's like it's supposed to be a ghost story, and there's like barely any ghost at all. It's just her wandering around the streets. Mm. So I was like, oh, okay, well, it seems that uh, that that is a it's a small group of people, but you know, there, there are people who are open to this sort of thing. Uh, I think the trouble we had uh, when we were trying to find a, a producer to get on board with us, uh, and this was very early on before we decided to produce it ourselves, uh, was more the fact that uh, they were saying things like, why is your movie in English? Uh, nobody well, wants to watch people yeah. speak English. So that was actually like the bigger hurdle we faced. Yeah, that was something I was going to ask about because I just wasn't uh, familiar if a lot of movies in, in Singapore are released in English or, you know, what was the uh, the thought process to, to make it in English? Um, okay. Generally, there aren't a lot of Singaporean films in English, but that's because, like, the population is... Okay, English is our common language because we have a lot of races here. Uh, a lot of different races. English is the language of business. It's taught in schools. You know, everyone is supposedly fluent to some degree or other. Uh, and, but the fact is uh, the media industry here caters mostly to uh, viewers in the Chinese language because they, when they make something, let's say a movie, they want it to travel further and they see their potential markets as like China, Taiwan, Hong Kong, that sort of thing. Yeah. So they, they don't really see like a, an English language market for local films. Yeah. But they, they're happy to bring in Hollywood and all that, you know. Right. Yeah. Uh, Gerald, so I don't what know. It's some kind of reverse racism or something. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, uh, Gerald, uh, what interested you in the, in the, in the movie? Uh, you yeah, this 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 whole idea of English. I mean, I've been working in um, I've been working in, in uh, TV and other films for a long time, maybe two decades and more, in the English language in Singapore. Um, uh, 
and 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 this was an opportunity to uh, really play a lead uh, in an English language film, uh, but not from somewhere else, but from my own country, you know. And 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 this was this was, this. I just thought this was great for me on 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 that level, you know, because that that's this language I'm comfortable most with. Uh, in fact, all all of us making the films are comfortable in this language, and we talk primarily in this language. Uh, I know it sounds odd to have to explain it to other people, but I guess we're a little bit like a version of, you know, uh, like Asian Americans, maybe. We, you know, we're very international, we're very multicultural, and, and like ming was explaining, this is our working language. So uh, this was one of the things that I, I, I wanted to, uh, I was relishing doing with them. And also I met, worked with Scott and ming for, you know, a few other uh projects on TV primarily. And I, you know, I, I, I really was happy to, that they invited me in uh, to be part of the creative process before even the filming began. Okay. Yeah. So, so you guys you know, had, you was, had, uh, I'm sorry, an interview. so you guys had yeah. uh, Gerald in mind for the role. Yes. Pretty early on. Yeah. What, yeah. What, what uh, do you think yeah, made but, Gerald right for, uh, for, for the role is Jim. <laughs> <laughs> okay well um well one well okay not no, well in, in no particular order right but uh one one of it was definitely like uh okay it was it really just came to us when we were writing the scenes like like, like we just kind of saw gerald it was like mm. yeah gerald's doing it. and 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 the uh the other point uh is that we imagined like uh, well, I mean, obviously, we uh, we've seen uh, Gerald in other uh, projects uh, on screen, and we we've seen like some scenes where he's like you know like really down and really sad and all that, and and Jim, the character he plays in Repossession, is something like that. You know, he's really uh, he's under a lot of pressure. He's really sad most of the time, very down, right? And so like we imagine like yeah, you know, G- Gerald would. <laughs> look good for for what the role requires uh-huh. <laughs> yeah i don't know if yeah. that's a flattering thing scott <laughs> no, 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 it's not, no it's a it's a flat it's a flattering thing because yeah i mean joe really is able to portray that so yeah <laughs> well if you say so <laughs> <laughs> he looks very happy now gerald so <laughs> we're good to see. but um yeah, yeah, it, yeah. We're, we're, we're it's like no smiling on set no smiling <laughs> <laughs> well, we don't have time to smile <laughs> <laughs> smiling after the movie right? so, but it's interesting the character because he does have a lot of traits that i think uh you know wouldn't be like likable but you have to keep the the character likable and sympathetic in the movie for it to work yeah is is, yeah. is that interesting to play, you know, a character that is flawed, but, you know, at the same time you have to keep him because he's the, the star of the movie, or the lead of the movie. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah, what what he actually goes through in his decisions and his actions aren't really something that I would call, um, you know, admirable or, you know, something that I would kind of recommend people to do, etc. Nice. <laughs> but, yeah, I, I, I had... I was interested in finding out, you know, the, the reasons and not, not play uh, a type or play a spec of, you know, a specification that, that, I, that, that this character should be or, or is written as, et cetera, et cetera. I mean, I think the exploration of the human reasons why he does what he does uh, was very fascinating for me, and as an actor, that that was kind of like a gold mine for me to explore as well, to to to, to come up in that you know to come up with reasons and to inhabit a territory about how someone like that in these circumstances um, kind of thinks, feels, and maneuvers himself onto the next thing. How does he do that? How does he come to these uh, you know? points in his life and what does he do about them yeah. and, and you know just to flesh him out really mm-hmm. and, and you gotta remember that that this character is an extremely repressed one which is mm. very it, it's it's almost like an 
archetype uh, in many parts of Asia and Singapore as well. Like, like we, we know many, many people who are almost exactly like that. And so we're able to take all these traits, you know, and, 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 and ways of how they think and put them into the movie. And, and Gerald can very, I wouldn't say easily, but, you know, it, it's, it's something that is very familiar to us. Like we know their thought processes. Uh, mm-hmm. And uh, we've had criticism from some audiences abroad uh, who, I think someone who walked out, like, told you later, right, Gerald, that yeah, uh, yeah. Oh, I, I couldn't stand your character. He was so <laughs> passive. He didn't do anything. And, mm. and to us, we're like, uh, no, he's actually really, really active, but not in like the traditional Hollywood sense. Mm. Like he keeps on trying, yeah. but this is like the only way he knows how to try. You know? Yeah. Yeah. And I like that... Um... You said about the uh, some people or one person walked out. Do a lot of people come to you and ask like, is a is it a real demon in the movie or is this all in their mind? And is that interesting to see people's different takes on uh, on the film? Uh, it is it is interesting. The, the funny thing is like I don't think many people actually come out and say it or come out and flat out ask the question, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, but we definitely wanted to have that. Um, degree of ambiguity there and we made sure that um, you know whichever approach you want to take to it uh, you can still kind of explain it that, that there's evidence both ways yeah so yeah when we when we were writing it like uh, we definitely wanted it to be ambiguous but uh, regarding uh, your, uh, your question if like you know a- anyone has ever asked that I think uh at, by the end of the film, they they haven't actually made up their mind yet. Yeah, because yeah, because like 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 what Mingxiu said, like we really put a lot of thought uh, into making sure that whichever approach that you 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 are leaning towards, there's evidence for that. But on the other hand, there's evidence for that as well. So like I I I, I think like that there's probably a lot to process. And like probably by, by the end of the film, like they 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 haven't had the time to actually make up their mind for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and and you know, um, we to the extent like we wanted to keep it ambiguous to the extent that we cut out our original ending. Oh, really? We leaned yeah. more heavily towards one direction. Yeah, and, and we just at the end of it, you know, looking through, we're like, we don't need this scene at all. And so we cut out one of our favorite actresses to work with completely <laughs> and felt so bad Sorry about her, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, she's great. I mean, she won theater awards and that sort of thing in Singapore. Uh, but we had to cut her out. And, and we're like, well, this ending works much better, you know. Yeah, I like the ambi- ambi- uh, ambi- It's easier for you guys to say because the uh... – because it kind of plays off the old saying of uh, uh, fighting your demons, which a lot of people think of, you know, more of um, addiction or something, but it could be anything, you know, any, any negative uh, um, emotions you have. And so is, is it an actual demon feeding off, you know, what's going on with him? Or is it, or is it just kind of, you know, an analogy you know, of, uh, of, of all this negative stuff in his mind. So it, it, it works either way, however you want to see the movie. And, and we were, we were actually quite determined to be as realistic as possible, uh, to be true to life, to the extent that, you know, we even spoke to like a mental health professional and I asked them, you know, what are the symptoms of this particular disorder or something like that? Or, or what, what kind of disorder would fit what we had in mind and then sort of tailored, uh, everything that happens towards that, but we never spell it out. Like, what is like, it? Yeah. Even now, like even now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not spelling it out. That, right. Yeah, it was trying to balance that, that, that fine line. Yeah. Which, yeah. I mean, that's, that's uh, what then, I like yeah. in movies. I'd rather have that and then you could talk about it, you know, with people you watch the movie with, uh, instead of something that just, you know, spells it out for you and tells you what to think. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah a good film should, I mean, more, more, in my opinion, like it, it should definitely spark conversations. 
Yeah. But, sorry, can I go on a little bit more yeah, about like, the degree of realism kind mm -hmm. of thing? Uh, like, you know, even the English language, uh, the language we use, English, is part of that realism because we want it to depict a certain segment of society uh, in Singapore. And that particular segment, the vast majority of them would speak English most of the time. Yeah. Uh, even at home. Uh, whereas uh, if I want it, if, if we wanted to uh, depict, you know, another segment of society, then we might say, oh, me, you know, these people, they might speak English outside with their friends, but then they go home and speak to their own family. They might use uh, Chinese or some other language. Yeah. Interesting. But that, uh, the uh, exorcism scene, we tried to be realistic as well. We actually consulted an exorcist. <laughs> And we rewrote the script based on the recommendations. Uh -huh. Interesting. Where, where does one find an exorcist? <laughs> Did you look on Craigslist? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, we, uh, we have some like, like temples that. and things like that. Yeah, yeah. in Singapore. So, uh, you know, if, if you ask around, it's, it's possible to find one. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What was that experience like, uh, Gerald? Uh, were you there uh, when they consulted the exorcist? <laughs> no, oh. um, not 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 when they were doing that particular investigation. But uh, some of this work that they Scott and and, and Minsu had done, of course, they they communicated and it filtered down to me because, you know with the great work that they did in the construction of the film and the script and the ideas that went into it, of course, you know, then you have the, eye, then, then you have the other layer, right? Which is the, how do we perform it? What do we say? How do we, how do we say this and express this? So um, all, all that background information, all, of course, uh, we had, we had great discussions about it. Uh, and then we would try it out. I mean, the great thing about it was the luxury of, having um, workshopping some of the scenes before we even got the cameras rolling uh, to find a sort of performance language and pitching, you know, and, and as you've seen in the film, I think one of the main things that we decided on commonly was, was this idea of stillness and reduction, uh, not giving away, not expressing, not saying too much and not, not telling people how, what and how to think and what do they what to think from one moment to the next you know maybe it's keeping them guessing or what you know but it's kind of it all works towards uh, Jim's character very strongly and help to kind of maintain him on a through line throughout even you know those moments where it was just realism where it was just very relatable social drama and then those moments when you know we go into the ambiguousness of is this horror or is this something just, you know, imaginings that, you know, are manifesting from his mind because horrible of his situation? <laughs> yeah, horrible imaginings. Right. <laughs> and, uh, you guys made this, you know, pre-COVID era, but um, it plays well in, in this time because it deals with a lot of people losing their job, depression, and uh, it's, a, yeah. it's weird, but it's topical, you know. Yeah. For this no, and, and we're actually getting like a second wind in festivals. Like yeah. last year, we got into like one or two and then it died completely. And then suddenly this year, like right now, I think we have like four or five or something like that, like all over the world. It's insane. Well, what has yeah, that been like of... the, I'm sorry to interrupt you. What were you going to say? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. No. Worries. I was just going to say, you know, you brought up uh, the second run at festivals. I was just wondering what the festival experience was like for, for you guys. If you got to see the movie, at, uh, you know, at some of these festivals. Uh, you mean like right now? Um, throughout the last, you know, a couple of years. Um, yeah, I, I mean, uh, last year we went to CineQuest. Uh, we went to uh, Warsaw. Uh, there was a, an Asian film festival going on there. And uh, that was amazing. Like we, we met so many great um, directors, uh, artists from all over Asia. You know, the irony is that in order to meet like fellow Asian Artists, we have to go to Warsaw. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> that is yeah, it's strange. Yeah. yeah, but but you know, being able to to be there and 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 connect with audiences and have this sort of interaction, like what we're doing now, like with them, uh, is is fantastic. 
I mean, we had a great Q&A doing dance films as well, but, you know, we didn't know how many people were out there watching, right? It, right. it was like this, you know, it, it's the host and it's us and we're chatting and they're saying, oh, well, someone has a question, but we're like, oh. Like, <laughs> you can't see them, like, right? Is it yeah, is it like two people? Up, is right, it like 50? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is. Weird. I mean, that's a that's one of the main things I miss personally is uh, going to the movies and going to the festivals. You know, I do a lot a year, and uh, and it's yeah. cool to do things like this. But you do you. This is more interaction than if we just did the audio show. But still, it's not the same as actually being there with people and watching uh, films yeah. with people, and then yeah, talking yeah. to everyone afterwards is a big part of the the festivals. Yeah, the thing is, uh, I, I don't know. We we kind of think that. Like in some ways, it's there are pros and cons to everything, right? Right. And the fact is that this particular situation benefits um, people from abroad a lot more because that you know that cost of going there is suddenly reduced. Right. Like before, we might have had to uh, pick and choose. Yeah. Like, what do we go to? What do we have the budget for? And then we're like, oh, anywhere. Sure, sure. Let's have a Q&A. Let's have a Q&A. Yeah. Right. yeah it's, it's, uh, and you, everyone's dealing with how this works with everybody. Because uh, some yeah. of the festivals are, are you know, they, they, they have it geo-blocked, so it's only in this one area, and some of them are worldwide. And you know, how, the, how, the, how will this affect other ones? And, and even when things go back to normal, uh, if this works out, maybe they'll still be doing them virtual. It's a it's a weird time. It is. It's. I mean, the 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 whole idea of the film also came out from some events that happened in Singapore um, before this happened. Uh, you know, then there's it. it I, I, I'm sure Minsu and Scott will tell you a little bit more about that. You know, there's a whole been, been a whole slate of redundancy, and who would have thought that. Uh, things would just take a turn from for the worse from right, even that from point in time yeah. from bad to worse, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and yeah, you know exactly. Just the the, the trajectory of what the, the the film says, and you know, just kind of just mirrors what's happening now. <laughs> so, uh, I, I was I, like I, this. Oh, sorry, sorry. Go on. Yeah, I always like this. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use your phrase, Scott. You say, you know, one of the main ideas that you, you both were interested in investigating is what, what's really horror? Do you want to talk more about that? Uh, because that's, yeah. Yeah, well, um, yeah, well, I mean, that, uh, uh, regarding that, that phrase, I mean, it was really how we uh, came up with the idea for repossession. Right, makes you like, yeah. I mean, we we were like, you know, like let let let's do something, and then we were like, okay, uh, horror, what you really afraid of? So that like, we and then me and Mingxiu got talking, and then we were like, you know, like because we're we're uh we're, we're Singapore, is Southeast Asia, right? And like there's like there's like so 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 much supernatural folklore and all that. So like usually like when when we say horror, people usually just imagine okay supernatural folklore so so like me and Mingxi are wondering like what what is really scary like like we we've seen like the 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 supernatural uh folklore movies and all that but real life is pretty horrifying you know (laughs) right yeah i mean i take a i I take Sadako crawling out of the well you know (laughs) over (laughs) what we're having now yeah yeah. <laughs> right. In real life horror, that's relatable to everybody. Where like a supernatural horror is cool to watch, but then the movie's over, and it's like, well, I know, yeah. you know, probably that's not going to happen to me. But real life horror that can happen to anyone. People can lose their jobs yeah. or have family problems or you know any of that. And and we and we just really enjoy the idea of like taking all these different kinds of horror and stacking them together and having them bleed in each other and playing around with that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Gerald mentioned, um, you know, before COVID and everything, that uh, some of the things that were happening is based on like stuff that was happening in Singapore. If that's something you guys would like to talk about, because it's something I don't know, and probably a lot of the uh, the audience doesn't know about. Oh, uh, well, it, there was just this round of uh, massive round of layoffs from uh, some 
big companies that were actually like government linked companies. And uh, a lot of people were unhappy because of the way that it was done, which was pretty much the way that is depicted in the movie. Uh, they called them in and they gave them two letters and like, do you want a, a letter of termination or a letter of resignation? You choose, but either way you leave today, you know, and, and yeah. that's yeah, so like, I, I, I think the, th uh, the phrase that like, uh, that was in the movie, which was what was used uh, in some of the articles was, Disguised retrenchments. Yeah. Yeah. Now, the idea of suicide, um, you know, is a lot in the movie. Um, as far as I, I know from, from some of my friends in other countries, that suicide is seen differently in, in Asia than, than here. Uh, is that something you guys can talk about? Like, how is suicide seen there? I, don't, I think it's more negative here in a way. Um, I don't... I, well... I think due to the work of many uh, mental, health pro mental health professionals and advocates, uh, people are taking a more sympathetic view of it. But um, I think... And that's probably better from the negative. I think, uh, I think here there's more of a stigma that people look down on someone who would, who would uh, commit oh, suicide. I think oh, it's definitely, definitely still there. The, yeah. the, the stigma is still very strong. Uh, you know, not just culturally, but there's also a lot of kind of religious sort of aspects to the whole thing, right? I mean, oh, and, 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 and legal, yeah, right? Like, and like legal. it was only but, yeah. recently that a, a suicide attempt was decriminalized in Singapore. Like before that, if you tried to take your own life, you would be charged. Mm -hmm. I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I think that's the same here. So yeah. yeah, it's it's yeah, it it's pretty much quite quite similar. I would imagine. Yeah, in fact, uh, it's even a little, there. There's this whole layer of taboo, and you know that you know that whole Asian face thing, which I think is an important element of the movie as well. How people people don't really say, or you know, there there's certain things that are not revealed if there's troubles in a family you don't reveal it if there's mental health issues in a family you don't actually let you don't actually want people to find out about it or and and therefore sometimes the worst things are you it, it gets it, it gets hidden and you know it doesn't get the help that it's that you know it's supposed to mm -hmm. well that's yeah. a big part it, of the movie too is the what's hidden and not uh you know yeah the reality of what's hidden and then you know is there something uh, supernatural yeah that? Yeah, like, exactly. like the perception of other people become the most important thing, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so so that's like kind of ridiculous, but but it it is very very much a part of uh, our culture still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, Gerald's I, character, Jim, if he wasn't so prideful, maybe you know it wouldn't go in this direction. If he would have been more upfront and not hidden in the shadows, uh, figuratively and literally. Absolutely. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and we have people remind him, you know, throughout the film, you know, here and there, we have people reach out a helping hand and say, hey, you know, let's talk about it. And he just closes himself off. Like, yeah. It's a very tragic movie, uh, you know, especially the end, but I don't want to give it away. But yeah, it's not an uplifting film for anyone who's... Uh, <laughs> Now it feels good, yeah. It won't the audience awards, no. <laughs> But, I mean, this is also something I kind of sort of drew from. I think, like, it's a kind of male, male uh, role that, yeah, that, 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 that people play in whatever culture. You know, that you you got a macho cultures around the world that, that have the same kind of thing, you know. And, and guys generally don't really know how to talk about feelings and, and you know it's not expected of them etc mm -hmm. etc and it's you know whatever and then you know it gets it, it does get it, it does get difficult and does get you know gets gets them into situations that are not healthy and uh amy who plays your wife in the movie linda she's great in the film and had you guys worked with her before oh yeah we've all worked together uh, and we same we wrote that for her as well yeah oh she 
Yeah, she's uh, super, <laughs> you know, charming and likable in the movie, and which makes everything, yeah. you know, that much more tragic when things start to go bad. Yeah. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I think we, we had somebody uh, comment in, in a Q&A, right, that uh, on her choice to play uh, one of the dramatic scenes, like, low, like, contained instead of, like, explosive, Right. And, and, and I mean, that was something that we all worked out together, you know, because we, we had the opportunity to, to build their characters and their relationships with each other and how they would react in, in, in certain situations and all that. Uh, and so we just all decided together and say, hey, like that should be like a contained scene. Mm hmm. So that you have a difference between that scene and maybe some other scene further down the road, because you don't want to keep on having explosions, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> right, right, yeah, yeah, that's more Hollywood, but yeah. yeah. Uh, 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 Scott, how did you and uh, go uh, start working together? Okay, oh, well, uh, well, I, I, I started as an actor. Well, I, I, I still act uh, mainly in Singapore. Um, and um, me, 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 me and Mingxi have worked together on, on, on these projects, uh, but like mainly he, he was the director and like I, 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 I was the actor. And like, like, oh, like, I mean, it's a small industry in Singapore. So like over the years, like we, we've worked with, uh, with each other like a fair number of times. And um, like we became friends and like we realized like, you know, like we, we have like, similar tastes uh, in, in, in films and all and like w like one day we just got to talking like hey, you know like we should probably do something together and then that's kind of how it's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. how does okay. co how does co-writing work uh, is it like uh, you guys both come up with ideas do you ever butt heads or anything yeah yeah well I mean yeah definitely <laughs> for sure uh, creative friction right <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, well, I mean, usually, like when 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 we think of uh, when when we try to come up with ideas, like we try like if we want if we choose to the the further develop it, like it has to be a strong idea, you know, like its foundations need to be there. Uh, only then we start to look like like take take a deeper dive into like that that story. And you know, if there's something something there like that, that's really substantial, like that really has a story, a journey, and uh, then then we start the lay out, uh, yeah, lay, lay out the foundations of the story and all that, and then and yeah, and that layers, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's kind of how 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 the the co-writing process is. Yeah, yeah, yeah and uh, and I. I have been writing for a really long time, um, like over 10 years. Um, so I, I, and I come from like a more science background, like in high school all the way, I was like doing sciences and stuff at, before I went to film school. So I, I'm very, very much about the logic and the plotting and things like that. And then Scott being an actor, he's very much about the emotional journey. So when we put balance. us together and then yeah yeah we balance out and we fight and all that and then if we find the middle ground that we are really happy with like usually it's something really solid mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and and only when it's really solid then we're like okay we we, we can show this uh to the actors that we have in mind so yeah so like so like even like before we actually like uh sent the first draft out after we we, we locked down gerald Locked down, damn, that sounds bad. But yeah, <laughs> uh, after we, uh, after like, you know, like Gerald and Amy and, and the others were like, okay, yeah, yeah, sure, let's do it. And then, and then we're like, okay, we're comfortable, send it out now. So, and, and like, it's solid. So, like, you know, like, that's a good impression there. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gerald, what's that? Let me tell you, you uh, go on, Gerald, yeah. I was going to ask you about that. Yeah, so go ahead, you're, you're, you. No, I was just going to ask, yeah. what's that like to work with uh, co directors? Is that any different than, you know, having one director? Not in this case, because I, I knew them both pretty well. I'd worked on the same project together with Amy, who, who you know, we, we have 
incredible chemistry together. I think uh, uh, I, I, I certainly mm -hmm. feel it, uh, and we 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 were just very comfortable with each other as individuals, as professionals, and colleagues in the first place. Um, and also the work that the the, the film that you know as as Bing Su and Scott were talking about had. Uh, really solid foundations. And it was very easy. Any actor will tell you that, you know, once they kind of are on stable ground and we were very stable, then you can really fly. You can really find out or, you know, the degrees and, and, and of intensity or stillness or explosiveness that you want to, to work out. And, and, that, and that was great, you know, which is our contribution to how it, the, the film and the ideas are expressed in reality, you know, you, you know, before in front of the camera, uh, and, and and the ability to actually just uh, ping pong back and forth ideas even during the shoot, uh, we, we, you know, that that was such a great way to collaborate and doing those things. I mean, even in in the scenes that when we're really, discovering, uh, and, and, oh yeah, well, that depends on on the the mutual trust that yeah. all of us have for each other. And that trust, you know, goes back years before this movie. Yeah. So, so like the movie itself, we, we already kind of had a shorthand in that sort of thing. Mm. Yeah. Interesting. <clears throat> how, how, how did you come to the uh, decision, like how you were going to represent the actual look of the demon in the movie? <laughs> Ooh. Uh, um, okay. Well, several factors i guess like okay one one was that we didn't want it to look and feel like anything you'd seen before uh we didn't want to go for like the cliches right and also we we didn't we we, we didn't have the money <laughs> but <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's hard to admit, but yeah, we didn't have the money for, for that sort of thing. So we had to get creative, right? Um, and, and even the, the notion of like the, the evil where like, you know, once you sort of put a label on it, then it's not scary anymore. If I say it's a vampire, I know how vampires work. They're not mm -hmm. scary. Yeah. Interesting. So like we, we, we wanted to sort of make our own rules for this. Like there are rules but they're rules that we made up ourselves and, and we stick very closely to them. So it's not like, you know, there's no rhyme or reason to it. That is, but you know, it's just not something that immediately, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, and as for the look of it, uh, Oh, Scott, you want to tell, tell me about like Siva's story in the, all the sleep paralysis. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, okay. Well, one, one, like with like sleep paralysis, uh, the, the, like all, all the records uh, are like people who do manage to see something because like most of the time like you, like you can't like open your eyes so you can't actually see but like for, for some who manage to what they report uh, what, what, what the reports say is that like they see like a dark silhouette like a dark figure just like near them Right, so like that—that that was one, and um, uh, and and this this is like uh one of the stories that um, uh, Vino, um, who plays uh Jim's Ziba. friend in the Ziba. Ziba, uh, he 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 actually told us this story. Uh, I I think it was uh during his uh military service, uh, his conscription uh that a friend of his got possessed. Right and uh, and then like they they got an exorcist and all that in, but uh, the way the exorcist was trying to exorcise this demon was that the, the 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 his friend that got possessed had to be on the bed and like they had to drape this white cloth or blanket over him because um they weren't allowed to actually see the uh, see the 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 eyes or, or or the face of this entity or. Or, or of or of whatever it was, but I don't like, remember this story. <laughs> yeah, yeah, wait, 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 yeah. And then, and then, like close when, like, uh, when it was being exercised, I think. Uh, what Siva saw was basically the shape 
of this well, human like form, something like that. And uh, it didn't look like his friend at all. Yeah, so like that, that, that like, like we kind of drew some inspiration from from that story. Yeah, oh, and, and there was another one when he had the, uh, when the uh, he woke up in the middle of the night, and and this was like in the army barracks, right? So you had like rows of beds, right? And he was next to the window, and he woke up and and he saw this, uh, really long figure just bend over like two or three beds across two or three beds and was like <laughs> looking at somebody over there. Did your hair just stand? That's kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty funny. So it, it, it's, it's Southeast Asia, you know, like everyone knows someone who's had a supernatural experience if you haven't had it yourself. Yeah. Interesting. Even here, uh, I had um, a, a director friend of mine who based his movie off real life experience at their house similar story about a dark figure that would be like at the end of their bed. And uh, it's weird. It's weird that people in all around the globe will have similar uh, vision, you know, will see similar things. It does, you know, make you think maybe there's something to that. And either way, it makes it uh, relatable to people. And if people, if they don't even know that, I think it at least adds some realism. Like you said, like this is something that other people have, you know, talked about that they would see. Right. And, and, yeah. uh, and then we wanted to just make it really dark. So we darkened everything uh, in post. We, we just told the VFX people, like, just make it pitch black, blacker than black, even. Yeah. yeah. Well, per I've personally experienced uh, that, that kind of thing where, you know, your mind's telling you, you, you kind of, I, you, you don't know whether you're dreaming or not, but you're paralyzed and you're trying to tell, will yourself to wake up because mm -hmm. something really bad is happening to you. And, you know, you, you oh, can't, yeah. you can't do anything. I, I've, I've been, I've been there myself. <laughs> the worst. <laughs> oh. My life. Yeah. 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 Sometimes, so that, that. sometimes now I, th I, I think, Oh, maybe I can just wake up from, uh, from everything that's <laughs> been going on. But, but unfortunately, yeah. 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 <laughs> Uh, on that line though about the the post uh, Gerald what did you think when you saw the finished movie because obviously they're filming it but uh, when you see it you know with the score and everything it's completely different mm -hmm. we saw I, two different yeah, yeah we saw I saw two, two different versions, versions. Uh, I because I, I'm, I was really I'm really privileged to have been part of this all the way even up you know the edits and then the re, you know discussing is, should this be more horror or should this be more social realism and all that? Uh, so in a way, it's difficult for me to take a step back because it's not like completely new, but it still is every time I see it, every time I see it with an, on screen uh, with a new audience in a different, I, I went to Cinequest, it was different experience, just feeling what this audience in you know San Jose was actually, how they were responding how is his audience in Warsaw was responding? Uh, and you kind of learn how the film works at that point when you, you're seeing it on screen. Uh, it was it's just fantastic to see it on screen uh, as well. Um, yeah, you know, and with Wei Young's music that is driving. Yeah, the score is uh, really that's great. Another layer, the score, you know, he's another character in the film. The music's another character. It, it's just an immersive experience, even uh, as someone who's been part of, of that, of the making of it, you know, just watching it is, 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 is a completely different experience as well. Yeah. And of course, you know, sometimes you cringe. I, I'm, I'm actually, to be honest, terrified every time, <laughs> you know, it, I have to go and watch myself on the screen. I'm terrified, and you know. Now you're the demon of seeing, of watching yourself act. Yeah, exactly. But, but I must say, you know, I walked away from it not too unscathed. Every time I see it on on screen, yeah. Yeah, and and uh, the, yeah, it's one thing that is really a pity uh, right now is that you know when you watch an online screener or dances of films. It's only in stereo, 
and we had spent so much effort on doing the surround on uh, like we, we were playing with directionality we had um, like there's one scene where um, uh, like for example the exorcism scene right like the uh, this demonic voice actually envelops the entire audience but now you know you just hear it through, through right. little, I think yeah, that's yeah, something yeah. that some people overlook sometimes when they say about watching a movie on the big screen, which I prefer. Yeah. But it's not just watching it; is the audio. It you know you're you're totally immersed in the experience, and it's not yeah. just visual; it's all your senses. Plus, you can't yeah, escape yeah. from the movie. I mean, you could if you want to go on your phone, but you shouldn't. But you can't. You're you're not. You're most likely not going to do uh, something else yeah. when you're in the theater. You're just there, and you're yeah. going to watch a movie. And if it's you know a movie that someone has really you know put a lot of effort into perfectly calibrating every single aspect to mm -hmm. work in that space then mm -hmm. that really is the the best way to do that yeah <laughs> unfortunately yeah mm -hmm. yeah i mean i obviously have to watch a lot of stuff on, on my computer or my or my uh, tv at home for the show and everything but it's uh not the same as watching anything in, in the theater even old movies new movies anything yeah. That's definitely the main thing I miss is going to the, going to the movies. But yeah. hopefully we can. Yeah. Yeah, we, we can go to the movies here now. I saw Tenet in IMAX. Oh, really? Yeah. How, what was that like? I don't know how to talk about Tenet. But. Oh, my brain hurts. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I do think they've actually opened a little bit around here too, but I haven't gone yeah. yet. It's, it's a weird, uh, weird thinking about it, but no. Uh, Hopefully, uh, everything will be uh, somewhat normal at some point in time. Right. Yeah. yeah. How about this? You know, uh, Gerald brought up the score. Uh, who did the score? I know he mentioned, but uh, who... uh, uh, Scott, you want to talk about? Uh, no, 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 no. Go, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, so it's this uh, composer called Hyo Wei Yong. So Wei Yong, I personally have worked with him on several projects before. And I just keep on going back to him. And we just keep on going back to him for everything that we do. Uh, he's like, we just get each other. Like we, like we, we don't even have to um, communicate that much. We just go like, oh, you know, like this should feel something like that. Should feel something like that. And then he goes and does his magic and he comes back and we're blown away. <laughs> uh, but he, he recently, last year, right? I think, yeah, yeah he, won a golden, he won a Golden Horse Award, which is, uh, which is given out in tai, Taiwan every year. It's kind of like the, the Chinese film equivalent of the Oscars. Oh, wow. So he won, he won that for his score on another film called A Land Imagined, uh, which won the Golden Leopard at Locarno Film Festival the year before. <laughs> Which is also a Singapore yeah. film, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it's pretty funny. <laughs> you mentioned you were playing Warsaw and it played uh, Dances with Films this weekend. And so, it's, and I think it's got uh, films come, um, might be a festival coming up this weekend, I think. Yes, uh, like I'm saying just now, Horrible Imaginings. <laughs> yeah. And so, uh, yeah. Uh, do, do your films normally play like all over the world or do you think part of that is um, because it is horror in the horror realm that it does, uh, you know, uh, connect with audiences around the globe? Does that make it more relatable, I guess, to, uh, to all other audiences? It's our first film, actually. Our first feature. Oh, okay. No, so we've, we've never, I mean, all, the, all the, the times that we said we worked together years in the past, that was all like local Singapore TV. I see. So this is a first yeah, but but when when we were creating repossession, we definitely had the uh, well overseas audience. Uh, well, everywhere, yeah, we 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 had like overseas audiences in mind. It wasn't we we weren't really trying to cater to like a specific region or anything because like the themes that we wanted to talk about. I mean, yeah, like on 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 the surface, like. A lot of it plays on this whole like uh, Asian toxic masculinity and like Asian notion of face, but like like the underlying themes are all very universal. So like we we always uh, wanted to like have it travel around everywhere. So and it's doing that now. And I mean with 
with the current situation now as well, um, it does seem that like uh, more people are able to relate to it as well. And one thing we definitely believe in is the concept of universality in specificity. Yeah. So like the more grounded in real in the particular reality something is, like you know, the more relatable it actually becomes because it feels real. Mm-hmm. It's not like some something set in generic city with generic people <laughs> doing generic things, you know? Right. Interesting. So uh, actually, like, example would be like Brookback Mountain, right? Mm-hmm incredibly specific time and place but you know look at how that plays with audiences all over the world Mm -hmm. that's interesting i think most people think would think the opposite like i'm going to make this so general that it could it could be any time any place and that will play to more people but what you're saying uh makes sense because like oh well this is this is an actual place as opposed to uh you know a made-up world yeah now, where does repossession go after the festivals? Like, is there going to be a physical release and uh, on demand and things like that? Uh, we don't know yet. Don't know yet. Right. Uh, we've been talking to a couple of people. Hopefully, we can work something out. I mean, while we're talking, we're obviously not allowed to say anything. Sure, yet, so no, I understand. We don't want to jinx it or anything. So. No, no, I, yeah. But it's uh, right now, uh, people need stuff to watch, and there are a lot of different uh, streaming platforms and stuff. So, you know, there's a lot of options out there for, uh, for the movie to go. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. Uh, yeah. I, I really Fingers loved crossed. the movie, not just because you guys were here. I really enjoyed it and told uh, a filmmaker friend of mine who, who mentioned that he's going to be watching it at, at Horrible Happenings coming up. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Yeah, cool. thanks. I, we, we found that. What um, I think people who study film or something like that, like filmmakers or, or, or people who, who have a more, uh, who like to like analyze and break down shit, right? Mm-hmm. Like typically they, they like it a lot, like because it was actually designed that way. Like with, with with multiple callbacks and, and layers and that sort of thing, it's like, here, go write a thesis. If you want to write a thesis, you can find you know evidence to 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 support yeah. any kind of take you want on it. Right. Well, that's why I like I like a lot of movies from the '70s because they they didn't tell you mm. what to think, and it's a movie you could talk about with people, and you know what does this mean, and all these things. And while this movie, you know, is is a current film and takes place very much in the modern world, but it has that feel as far as a, a, as filmmaking yeah. goes. Oh wow! Thank you. Yeah. Welcome. Yeah. yeah, I love those '70s movies, man. That that was a golden year, age. <laughs> Definitely. Uh, how did you get into acting, Gerald? By the way, were, were there any uh, when you were growing up in, in Singapore? Did you see primarily uh, movies from that era, from that area, or did you see movies from other parts of the world? I, I, I saw a lot of American stuff. You know, like everybody else, you, you, you get you get it on your know, black and white TV. That kind of betrays how old I am. I, I, I started, and then you, you 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 get everything. You know, like. I mean, I don't know, Tali Savalas, you know, uh, yeah, um, Charlie's Angels, Combat. You, you get the whole works, and we, whatever was playing out there. And then, of course, um, you know, then the cinema was also happening. You know, every from Star Wars, Saturday Night Fever, French Connection, you know, uh, The Godfather, all that stuff just sticks in your mind. Um, I, acting wise, I, I I love stories. I love reading. Uh, I was a long time, and still am a, a theater actor. I I got in the theater primarily. Uh, that was what pulled me into acting, and and then uh, TV. Uh, but I also love movies and films, and I I'm you know I, I I'm so happy to actually be working in this in in this genre right now. So it, it, anything you know that 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 tells stories. It's, it's something that I'm, 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 I'm there. I want to be there. 
Uh, uh, Scott and uh, and Go, do you guys are you guys working on anything together currently? I don't know if you yeah, can work on anything currently. Yeah, I guess, but oh, oh. Uh, well, I mean, oh. yeah, a few, <laughs> few, few ideas. Uh, well, I mean, the 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 one uh, well, we're developing quite a few ideas, but uh, well, I mean, I mean, hopefully they'll get off the ground soon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, there was one which we were recently at the Buchon in the National Fantastic Film Festival. Uh, the, the project market component of that, uh, like our, our project was selected and we got to like meet and pitch with uh, com production companies and, and sales agents and all that from all over the world. And that particular project is kind of like a feminist take on a serial killer thriller. In safe Singapore, yeah. Yeah. And then we've got a jungle noir that's yeah. set in like the Malaya jungle. Right. Uh, we like to play around with a yeah. lot of yeah. Yeah, yeah. genres. I know I do the horror movie show, but I like all kinds of movies. So it's... Uh, I'm okay. interested. Uh, how can you follow uh, Repossession or you guys, you know, if people want to see what's going on? Online? Oh, yeah. Uh, definitely we've got our Instagram at Repossession Film. Uh, Facebook is also the same... Uh, and Twitter is repossession SG for Singapore, uh, simply because of the number of letters. <laughs> they don't right, yes. Yeah. Yeah, I remember on Twitter I tried to put without your head horror, but it was too many things as well. So, yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, oh, did I interrupt you? Funny, you I'm sorry, what were you going to say? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. I didn't know if I was yeah, interrupting Scott earlier if he was about to say something. Oh, no, no, no. All right. No, no. No worries. Yeah. I guess I wasn't. But uh, <laughs> I mean, like this, there's, I, I, I think part of the reason that we're so steeped in genre uh, in this region or something like that is just because we have so many cultures here and each culture has its own like supernatural legends and mythology and things like that. Uh, like right now is actually we're smack in the middle of the Hungry Ghost Month. Oh, really? Say, uh, Interesting. For like Chinese people. Uh, it's kind of like Day of the Dead for Mexicans, but like an entire month. It's like the gates of hell are open and all the spirits come back to visit and, and wander around. And uh, I mean, they have pretty good benefits, it seems, like, you know, a whole month off. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's a good time to be, to be a spirit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it feels like they were let out in January or February this year. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> prematurely. Yeah. And well, they haven't gone back in. No. Yeah. Yeah, maybe, maybe after the month is over, uh, they'll 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 be put back away. <laughs> maybe maybe uh that there's a story uh there's a story idea there, huh? I mean, too. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. more. They lost the keys. <laughs> yeah, I, <love. laughs> yeah, I also yeah, think yeah. plus with, with genre you can talk about like this movie like repossession you can talk about social uh, commentary you can put anything you want you know within the genre within yeah. a genre piece if it's horror science fiction anything like that exactly that's that's like my favorite thing about genre is that you can yeah. make and especially especially if you are living in uh under authoritarian regimes that because all your metaphors they're just gonna like oh okay it's fun it's funny you know like like they can crack down on on uh uh rallies and, and protests and that sort of thing and then they see like the hunger games and they're oh that's fine it's right, right. <laughs> all about that yeah interesting because uh the last festival i was at before everything uh stopped was uh south texas underground film festival and there was a filmmaker there from from uh, china from wuhan china actually and uh his film uh, cucumbers a short movie and he said he had to change it because it was about uh about the government and so, but he said it actually made it a better movie because then he, he hid what it was really about within, within yeah. like science fiction genre yeah. and it actually made it a better movie. And then the, because he was financed by the, the Chinese government, uh, his yeah. schooling, so he couldn't make something that was actually about the government. 
So, but then it, it made a better movie, and it's still about it, but it's hidden, and it's just, it was a weird uh, thing he was in. Yeah, yeah. subversive yeah. is always fun. Yeah, yeah, always a way. Yeah, this uh, this this hap- this this happens here as well, right? In Singapore, I mean, the the project I did before this one of the feature films that I was working on was called Apprentice. Uh, it is called Apprentice, and it's about the the prison system in Singapore. Uh, uh, a particular character story around the hangman. We still have capital punishment in Singapore, and uh, we weren't allowed to film in, in in Singapore. We had to do all the like the prison scenes in Australia. We had to film, yeah. So it's it's like quite getting around, getting around stuff always throws up you know great great ideas, great great ways of dealing with. Uh, you know, whatever taboo. And then when you went to Cannes, you know, they're all like, oh, yay, good, Singapore, yay. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. Well, our repossession, I, I thought it was great. And so uh, for people out there, when it's at a festival online or whatever that you can see, I, I definitely recommend it. Thank you. I yeah, appreciate I'll it. thank all of you guys for coming on the show today. Thank, thank you for having us. Yeah. Yes. Very good. All right. Well, have a good night. I don't know what time it is there. I don't good know if night. I should say have a good night or good day. Or... It's like uh, 2 a.m. Oh, okay, well, yeah. good night. Oh, you guys stayed up late for the show. Thanks. Right. Or got up very um, early either way. I'm not sure. But... Good day. <laughs> all right. Take care, everybody. Take care. Take care. Bye. Bye. Bye.